What is up my fitness freaks? Welcome to another video. So, I have hired my new coach, my Lee Chris Jones. Started that this week, um, had a good chat to him in his gym, uh, recorded this training footage which I'll be placing throughout this video so you can kind of see his condition uh, versus mine. You've just seen my what I look like uh, right now. I recorded that um, bit of posing footage as of today. And the goal is to get as shredded as my coach, Chris Jones. Um, so I'll just show you some posing footage of him here now. He looks insane. In person, it's crazy to see someone that lean with that much muscle mass. Um, really awesome. And basically, my goal from coaching is to get contest shredded. Uh, and then once I'm at that sort of stage, um, I will either pick a contest and do it, or if there's none that are like immediately around that sort of time within four to six weeks, what I will do, or what we're gonna do with me and my coach, is we're gonna lean bulk up, uh, improve my weak area as best as possible, and do a show early next year instead, and absolutely smash it. But hopefully there'll be some later in this year, especially as a lot got postponed because of COVID. I think a lot of the shows have been pushed back to later on in the year where normally the bodybuilding season would have ended. But yeah, I'm taking things really, really seriously now. Um, and Chris has given me an outline of a plan and it, I just wanted to talk about it because it's so different from what I was doing. And this is why you hire a coach, is to get a second opinion and a second set of eyes. And Chris is the perfect person to get me contest shredded because, I mean, you see how Dice is himself. He's incredibly experienced. He's about to do his final couple of shows this year and then he's done. Um, and he's focusing on the coaching and hopefully he can bring people like me up to that level. That is what I'm hoping to get out of this. Uh, and just from the first week with him, I've already learned a lot. And I've just been making some rookie mistakes that now they've said them to me, it makes so much sense, but um, I'm just going to go through them. So, some big changes to what I was doing for the first, the last four months. So, I got a dad bod in lockdown, boom, picture here. I was really depressed, I wasn't training, I was eating just pure shit the whole time. Um, life sucked in lockdown, it got, it got really bad, especially the winter one. So then, for the last four and a half months, I have been dieting down, and I've been dieting down on some really low calories, high protein, uh, and I've been training a lot. And when Chris went through what I was eating now, and how I'm training, I hadn't really adapted it for how much muscle mass I've put back on and fat I've dropped. Um, so he basically said to me, I'm eating nowhere near enough, or uh, uh, you know, I need to eat a, at least another 500 calories a day at least. So the full diet plan is still pending, um, he's gonna do that for me next. But he also said I was training too much, I wasn't putting in enough rest days, um, and he's given me a completely different training split, which I find really interesting, and it perfectly fits what I wanna progress on my physique and my weak areas. So I'll just go through it with you and how it differs from what I was doing before. So before I would do, this is my sort of general split, um, back and shoulders, chest and arms, legs, uh, that'll either be a quad or hamstring focus, then back and shoulders, chest and arms, legs again. Uh, I pretty much follow that pattern. It is a lot of volume, it is a lot of training, and there is not a lot of rest. I was also, generally, I've only been eating 2,000 to 2,500 calories a day, um, and only like 100 to 200 grams of carbs. Now, this has helped me melt, melt fat off really fast, but it's at the point now where I'm sort of crashing my metabolism, that I'm just not eating enough, and I'm not eating enough to you know repair properly. And I have noticed that I've been really dead in the evenings, like just really sluggish, struggling to focus, falling asleep, um, just really not having much energy at all. Especially after a training session, I'm just done um, and I shouldn't really feel like that holding this much body fat so I haven't really adapted my diet the way I should have as I've progressed my physique um, I've just sort of stuck to the same thing which is why I've got a coach I've got to a point now where I need some refinement I need some fine tuning uh, and Chris is given this already um, so the diet wise uh, you know I'm just eating not enough um, and you've got my training there, six days training a week, every body part twice a week, and it's just a lot. I, I train for like three hours, two to three hours, 
plus cardio on top on upper body days, no cardio on leg days because it just is counterproductive. Um, now my split has completely changed, so rather than the one I just talked about, he has changed it too. So session one is hamstrings, back and forearms. This may seem like a weird one, but it actually makes a lot of sense. So I've seen Kuba Celian uh, on Instagram do hamstrings and back together, and it seems like quite a common thing for professional bodybuilders to do. And I've really been trying to work on build up my hamstrings as well. So the way a hamstring back and forearm day would be structured is, I would pre-exhaust with some hamstring curls, um, probably four sets seated, four sets single leg, uh, with some intensifier variations in there. Then I've been doing sumo deadlifts, as you know I've been doing that in, um, I did that in a video, and Chris has taken note of this, and that's why he's worked in a back hamstring combo day. Um, because obviously you're gonna work your lower back doing sumos. Then after sumo and uh, stiff leg deadlifts, or I can put them in a bit later in the session, um, so your lower back's already worked, your back's warmed up, your hamstrings are done after that point. Um, I'd probably do some high leg leg press in there as well, and then I would go on to all my back movements, my rows, my pull downs, um, that sort of thing. Um, and then forearms just to finish off because I've been really trying to thicken out my forearms and just make them bigger um, because they really lack compared to the rest of my arm. So hitting forearms a lot more frequently and that's why it's in a back and hamstring session as well. Um, so that's day one. Uh, the second day is shoulders, tries, and calves. So um, I'm actually training calves every other day at the minute, pretty, or if I can, every day, if they're not too sore. And honestly, this is the first time I've ever seen any noticeable progress in my calves over a, a, like a month period. Um, I recorded some calves the other day, and I'm gonna compare it in two months' time to the clips I recorded yesterday, just to, um, show progress because they're actually really coming along nicely and this training them every other day, training them every day sort of thing is working really well, especially because I'm putting them at the start of my workout. Um, now this just means you hit them harder, you're not as fatigued, you can actually properly focus on contractions and that, you've got the full energy at the start of your workout. If you try and bolt on calves at the end of like leg sessions or other sessions, you're drained from your workout, calves are also really boring, you end up half assing it, or you don't do the full amount of sets you're doing, or, you, or you're too tired to physically just do the calf training properly. Whereas doing them at the start, you can really hammer them, and then you can just go and train upper body afterwards and you know let the calves recover, where you don't have to mix with any leg stuff. I actually really like training calves separately from legs where I can. I think it makes the calf training much more effective. So that's day two, um, calves, shoulders and triceps, uh, makes a lot of sense. Then day three, again, is calves to begin the workout, quad session, um, and then a hamstring top up. So because I'm doing back with hamstrings, I might not do as much uh, hamstring training on the back day. So on this quad day, we'll finish up with some extra hamstring work just to make sure they get properly finished and trained well. Then after the three days, um, he's put in a rest day. So on rest days, I've been told that I should get up and try and do some sort of fasted cardio um, to get your metabolism going straight away. Also because on rest days, I'll be eating lower carbs. We need to be trying to stay active to get my metabolism up without uh, doing weight training. And then in the evenings um, on rest days, I will still be going to the gym and I'll be doing 30 minutes of uh, Stairmaster at least up to 45, um, maybe more, but to begin with I'll just do 30 minutes. And also on, on these rest days I might do more calves as well because it's not really training a big muscle group, it's not gonna drain me, and it is one of these areas that I need to improve massively. So that's how my rest days will be structured. So uh, they've got rest day, then we've got uh, one chest day, and um, I might do a bit of extra shoulders tacked on with this as well, just to really get that you know freakish uh, delt size back. Um, but it's, it's coming back pretty nicely as is. Then day six is an arm day. I've been training arms solo uh, one session a week, so, and it really makes a difference doing an arm day on its own. And because I've got quite long arms as well, I need to add that much more mass on them to make them look big and my arms have developed shitload in the last year and a bit. And yeah, finally, day seven, another rest day. So it's actually only five days training a week, whereas I normally do at least six, sometimes seven, 
and also the structure of my training over the last four months has been a bit random. So although I say it's the back and shoulders, chest and arms, quads, back and shoulders, chest and arms, quads, it very rarely ever actually works out like that because I'm so exhausted and drained and not recovering in time that I can't actually do my split like that. So having uh, a less voluminous training split and one that really targets my weak areas, you know, I think is really gonna benefit me and having this rest time is just something that I didn't wanna have before because I wanted to just strip this fat off of me as fast as possible. But that's not always the best approach and that's why I hired Krish because he's a professional, he knows what he's doing um, and he knows how to get us into that shredded state without running me into the ground and I'll be able to keep regaining muscle. Um, the final thing he changed is my cycle. So I've just been doing, I say just been doing, I've been doing 200 milligrams of trend nth and 200 milligrams of test nth for the last 16 weeks. Um, it has given me a pretty crazy transformation but he's told me now to drop the trend um, and instead we're gonna use uh, up my testosterone to 500 milligrams a week and we're going to add in primobolin at around five to six hundred milligrams a week just to really help dry out but also keep that muscle size and fullness um, and to be honest i don't mind giving train a break and what we're going to do i think is save it for when i'm actually ready to enter a show and use it for contest prep only to get that crazy freaky fullness and size with the shreds at the same time um, but at the moment uh, i he says I don't really need the trend necessarily, so uh, I'm sure do, I'm doing exactly what he says. Um, and we'll, I mean, he looks crazy shredded, and that's how I want to look. So I'm just going to listen to everything he says. And you know, what's the point in hiring a coach if you're not going to do or listen to what they say? Um, but it's just giving me a fresh set of advice on where I need to go, and I'm trying to surround myself with the right kind of people now to push me in the direction of getting myself to that professional kind of level. I know I've got it in me. That's why I hired Chris. Um, I've prepaid him two months up front, so I've got at least eight weeks with him. So we're gonna see what I can pull off in eight weeks. Um, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be something, the craziest transformation I've had yet. Um, and then we're just gonna go from there. So I'm really excited. Um, Chris is a really nice guy. He knows his shit. And my coaching services are gonna get better by being coached by him. Um, it's just going to take me to that next level and give me a different perspective and you know there's all different exercises that he was doing um, that I'd never seen really done before on that combination so I'm definitely going to learn a lot from him um, and yeah I'm just really looking forward to the next eight weeks I've never been so focused and yet excited to diet down um, and just smash it stay tuned for that keep subscribed um, keep watching and prepare for some craziness to come because I'm really going to fucking bring it this year. I'm, I'm just so ready to go. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll catch you all very soon.